There's a great power in the inability of theater to create a complete illusion. And I think that live performance obviously has a certain kind of uh, excitement that uh, digitally reproduced or electronically delivered uh, media doesn't have. Um, there's a difference between watching a live actor on stage and uh, an actor in a film because what you do while you're in the audience watching can and will actually impact the performance and, and alter it. Uh, that's not an experience that you can have uh, watching a film. And you don't know when you're going into the theater what's going to happen, which produces a kind of discomfort and uh, an anxiety. The theater is not finished. It's not uh, concluded. Um, when it goes away, when a run of a place is gone, it's gone forever. So all of those things are, um, are I think, uh, very vivid in, in one's conscious or unconscious mind when one is watching the theater. I think it's a infinitely more um, powerful communal experience because of that. Uh, you team up with your other audience members, even if you don't know them, to have an impact on the stage. You do that within the first five seconds, whether you've intended to do that or not. People who go to the theater all their lives aren't aware that they do it, but anyone who's on stage or who does theater knows that within five minutes of the thing beginning, you know what kind of audience you're going to be dealing with. There's a great power in the inability of theater to create a complete illusion. Uh, theater can't really entirely successfully convince you that anything that isn't actually happening on stage is happening. Whether you're talking about a murder or an angel crashing through a ceiling or you know any number of things, you 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 have all sorts of clever tricks uh, to make people you know sort of. Uh, to try and make them actually believe that they're, what they're seeing is happening. And there is a part of uh, the audience experience of watching these illusions on stage that's very compelling, and they believe that what they're seeing on some level is actually happening. So they're moved or exhilarated or terrified or whatever, um, as they would be if this was happening in the real world. But because the illusion is always in theater, only partially successful um, and, and not overwhelming, um, um, and really can't be uh, um, just because of a limitation of means, because of the sort of cooling distance, uh, physical distance. So all of these things work uh, to sort of militate against your completely believing that what you're seeing is real. And, uh, and that creates, I think, um, a kind of critical consciousness. And I think it's why theater is one of the reasons that theater is absolutely uh, essential uh, to uh, human beings. What theater does is create um, a laboratory in which people have a direct experience of being able to believe and disbelieve at the same time and to watch something and to get what it's supposed to be and what it's made to be on its surface and also to read it at the same time, sort of dig beneath the surface and interpret. There's a, a way in which um, the doubleness of theater, I think, um, its poverty of means works in a, in a profoundly important sort of epistemological way and, uh, and, and teaches you something no matter what it is that you're watching, which is that you, you can't be a literal reader of life. You have to be an interpreter. And uh, unless you do that, you're a mechanical who doesn't get the essential uh, truth and joke of life. You know, there'll always be new forms of, of theater and uh, you know, we have a tradition in this country of uh, experimentation with theatrical form that's really produced some of the most magnificent works of theatrical art of the last, you know, 50, 60 years. I mean, theater always incorporates uh, um, sort of cutting edge te technology that it can afford. Back in the days, in the 18th century, it brought in all these pulleys and ropes. Uh, those were the pulleys and ropes being used on ships. Ships were the, the bit most advanced technological stuff available. So the idea that you could hoist scenery by means of pulleys and ropes was a new application of physics. And now you can go see the work of somebody like Liz LeCompte in the Wooster Group, and she does stuff with video screens and television, that, you know, uh, and it's, it's fantastic and exciting uh, stuff. The forms will um, 
change to this or that extent and still be recognizable. We can still look at Aeschylus, which is about as early as a, a text as we have, and and even though you know it was performed by people who thought that the brain was in the liver and who you know had a completely different sense of cosmology than we had, uh, so much of it is instantly recognizable, and the basic dramatic form is there. It's really about two opposing points of view or three opposing you know that get on stage and yell at each other until one of them wins or both of them lose or whatever. And part of the experience is always that it's fake and it's not what you experience in your daily life and it's something cruder and rougher and unconvincing and that's what theater is for, is to bring you face to face with, I think, a more essential sense of what human beings are, a more sort of stripped down sense of what human beings are. Uh, freed of the trappings of, of everyday life and the things that we're used to. I don't see how that really alters and, uh, you know, innovation is always uh, important and exciting to any art form, but I don't think it's, um, it's predictable exactly how, how that'll go. I'm uh, Tony Kushner and I'm uh, encouraging all of you to subscribe to Thinker. Uh, the content is extraordinary and, uh, and exciting and it will actually make you think.